Hello, this is Bunting, and today I'm going to be going over some SFAM style sound design using Vital and Ableton's Magic. <laughs> All right, so right away, you'll notice a lot of SFAM sounds are just variations on distorted sine waves, like many other freeform bassy kind of artists. Right, so of course we have our drums up here. You just want them knock in with some kind of trap-esque snare. But right away, let's just go into Vital and see what's going on. So as you would see, as it opens, right here, I have a sine wave, yes being automated by an LFO, awesome, but also introducing a tiny bit of FM with this pitch up to 12 and this on basic shapes giving us another sine wave. The reason I chose to do this, right, so turning off all these effects, I wanted a slightly vocally effect, right, which I actually wasn't able to get too well, but the way you would do that is change the harmonics over time while downsampling, right? But where the distortion comes in is where the beat for the bass and pretty much the whole sound comes in. So introducing some overdrive after this redux here gives it way more harmonics. I just twisted it to the middle, twisted up the drive tone and all that jazz. Some further beef, just a saturator, default saturator with the drive up. Another overdrive, just to uh, fuck it up completely. Noise afterwards, because I really don't care anymore. And I noticed that a lot of SFAM basses sound very lo-fi in a way, you know? And to achieve that, I just pretty much just pushed it until it broke, and then used the OTTs to dial it back into something tangible. Actually sounds different, oh, because it wasn't using erosion. That's what it's supposed to be. Okay, now this quick yomp here or whatever, your basic yoy yomp, whatever you want to call it. Just picked a random kind of wave that sounded all right and introduced some FM. Right, and I have some level automation with this LFO. Also have some FM automation and also have some wavetable automation. You could achieve this in a few different ways. Let's try a sine wave here. In fact, that's probably better because you get a lot cleaner results. You just want some harmonically rich kind of screechy wavetable to be FM'd. Also for a bit of width and this coolness, I introduced some unison and turned down the steep tune quite a bit. Over here, of course, multiband compressor, because no patch is complete without it. That's a lie, but you know what I mean. It just beefs up the sound nicely. And a filter, this gives it that quick, quick swell, open and close, that gives it that whoosh, that whoosh that we love to love. I turned down the resonance, because I didn't want a little squelch going on. Just the cutoff for today. And of course, reverb afterwards to make it ring out. All right? I, you can hear stuff like that in a few of the SFAM songs. Now this absolutely massive distorted bass, right? Another distorted sine wave. This is just a sine wave in Vital. Big whoop. Crazy, I know. Sine wave, right? And you can go a lot of different ways about distorting your sine waves to get interesting different results, different tones. So really experiment with that. I know SFAM does. So first of all, I just have the hiss preset from our erosion, right? Hiss preset. Overdrive. I was just dragging it around and thought, oh, in the middle it gives it a cool, like, crisp to it, you know? I didn't quite want down here because that just, it sounds so boring, you know? Just so basic. But I was like, all right, we got the crispy mid-range, just the freaking awesome kind of fluttering noise. I'm gonna beef it up a bit with another overdrive. And notice I was tweaking the knobs on here. I turn up the drive and tone, dynamics. I turn dry wet to 100 on this one. Right, and then same thing here, just tweaking around till I got a sound I liked. And then for some even further beef, a saturator.
These knobs don't do a whole lot, so you can pretty much get away with just turning them dry. And then an OTT afterwards, just to glue it together. It doesn't have a huge effect. And one thing that I didn't add that I should is a glue compressor, right? Just to soft clip it at the end. Because you don't really want your channels clipping. I mean, you can, but... Okay, it looks prettier when there's no red, alright? And of course, I have some pitch bend automation. Awesome. Now this weird moist effect that you can hear quite a few of SFAM stuff. So first, our vital patch. I pretty much copy my original kind of yamp patch, right? And you actually don't even need this FM. You kind of want a richer wavetable, richer harmonically. Because that way, it gives you that squish in the end result. Of course, also some compression and low pass. But this filter is very important in that it's just very quick on an eighth note frequency, right? Just whoop, 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 whoop. Real quick, right? And this phaser gives it that awesome movement. I just turned on a phaser, right? Turn down this offset. Change the frequency. You can also automate it however you want. You could automate it manually. You can automate it with an LFO. Whatever you want, right? Change the center until I got a nice squelchy tone out of it, right? And turn the feedback up so it's much more audible, right? But the ma real magic happens. See, that's cool. Let's turn off all our effects and hear how it sounds like. That's cool, right? But this vocoder sauces it up. So what I did to this vocoder is, so you start off something like this. I'll just do it from scratch for you. Vocoder is awesome, by the way. Use it. You start off with this on noise. You want it on modulator. Let's enhance our signal. That kind of OTTs it coming in. Makes it nicer. Let's turn up our depth. Turn down our release, because why not? This makes it as like plucky and moist as possible. Turn up our BW. Cool. But as you see, it pretty much destroyed the whole sound. There's barely anything left. But if you just crank up an OTT before it, and maybe mess with your release a bit, you'll see that it's much more audible. You definitely want to crank it up with some type of gain boost. I just chose OTT because it also adds some nice harmonic content. Then to stop it from clipping, this is kind of unnecessary, honestly. So this frequency shifter, all I did here, I turned up this amount here. That gives it a weird phasing effect as it's just shifting through the frequencies willy-nilly with this LFO here. And Corpus. Now Corpus is a very underrated plugin that you hear a lot, a lot in SPAM stuff. I'll show you it on a bass down here as well. But that might sound familiar, right? So with Corpus, basically what it does, it's like a resonator, kind of, like a resonator simulator. So you have different settings here, beam. So this is like, it's resonating through a beam, through a marimba, through a string, through a membrane, like a drum, through a plate, pipe, tube, and all that. And you can tune it. Like, that's just freaking sick, right? But it's so messy, but that's where you can turn on your decay. And it's clean like that, and it adds an awesome layer to it. It's just freaking sick to use. So let's, let's really experiment with this. I, a lot of experimental bass pro producers use it. I know Flume does, but it's just freaking awesome, man. Now, here's the big trick I find for a lot of SFAM's kind of lo-fi sounding insane basses. And don't worry, I'll get to these, like, this lead down here, too. So, first of all, without anything, it's this, right? But beyond this, this sample here, it's fucked with using the sampler, okay? So what I did for this is I took this sample here, right? I froze it, so I'm just going to duplicate it, right? Duplicate it, freeze the track, this converts it, well, it freezes it, right? So it's not going nowhere. Then you can flatten it into audio, right? And then from there, you can really mess with it with this sampler here. So, you see? Sound familiar? I'm, I'm convinced that this is how SFAM gets a lot of his just really weird lo fi e basses. And you can experiment with different modes, beats, right? You can even change this here. 
you go like uh, one bar or like a sixteenth, this makes it click basically. You know, with these different modes here. Okay, that that's that's for another video. That's a lot of stuff to go into. But you see on texture, you can change the grain size, make it flutter or kind of sustain. That's with your transpose. You can even warp it, right? Where let's warp it. And you can stretch it out like as short or as long as you want it. Let's put it on like beats. Let's put this back. You know? And really mess with it, warp it around, manipulate it. And I just settled on this sound here, right? This is just on Formant, I mean Complex Pro with the Formants down, right? And you can add some post-processing after that, right? So overdrive, crisp it up, another corpus. This just adds so much beef. If you put it on the membrane mode, turn down your tune to a point you like it, and of course your decay down so it's not just messing everything. And auto pan after this. So for auto pan, it's great for automating volume. So what you would do for this, so turn your mount up, you see, and turn your phase down so it's not, this makes it more or less stereo. Now it's mono. And cool, now you have this rate to mess with, but you want it on this notes mode. And yeah, you can just automate your volume. Except it's kind of off beat. It starts off beat, but if you turn it to 180, you're just, you're cruising right along here. It's right on time. Cool. And just glue the compressor after that, because why not compress it and soft flip it. So right here, this sound is achieved also through vocoder. You can hear a lot of that in SFAM stuff. Just listen for it. If you hear something crazy moist and alien sounding, it's probably vocoder. That's a rule of thumb. So, the base of this sound, which is just an awesome trick to use, use this. It's a saw wave, a normal everyday saw wave, but just pitched down. And this gives a crazy, like, clicking effect. That sounds just awesome when you add some filtering, right? So I compressed it, multiband, and add a phaser. Typically, it's just plain, normal. The phaser gives it these resonant peaks, which just make it awesome, right? OTT afterwards, well, first vocoder, right? Turn the turn up the depth, turn up the BW, and turn up the bands, right? So it just I just get the moistest sound possible with the most harmonics, and of course, crank the OTT beforehand so it's nice and audible through the vocoder. And another corpus, corpus, corpus. This time on plate, I'm really just messing with the different sounds, seeing what I like, and messing with the tune. But another thing for some kind of movement. You can introduce this LFO here, turn it on, and this pretty much just sweeps through the tune. It's awesome. It's just a cool thing. And of course, you always want your decay down for the most part, unless you really want to ring it out. Some further weirdness added a delay, right? I put this on time mode, so it's real quick, so you hear that ringing out. And I turned down the dry wet, so it's just a subtle background layer. Awesome. Makes for a cool fill. Cool. So this right here is pretty pretty similar technique. The same bass waveform, as you can see from these, this lovely shape here or whatever, right? And process it similarly. Overdrive, OTT, right? Auto pan. But I'd, I went a little variation, so I didn't go all the same effects. You see, I didn't use this corpus. I ended up adding more OTTs, which greatly changes the sound, makes it a lot brighter, right? And pitched it to a different frequency. So. Now this cool lead that you hear in a lot of trap stuff, and also SFM. So, yeah, a lot of stuff going on here. But your bass, or at least the bass I used, is actually a kitchen sample. And a lot of trap stuff you hear, a lot of pots and pans kind of sounds. 
or like metallic -y sounds and what do you know it's literally because they're using a pot sample so I did start out out with it like um not like that okay what the heck did I do here I did something to uh, cut it off but yeah I started out with a pot sample just kitchen sound kitchen sounds yeah I've used these quite a few times just look up kitchen samples you'll get a lot of great pots for weird trap leads and however I did it I cut off the beginning but I can't figure out how I did it so sorry <laughs> I cut off the beginning because with all the processing it just sounded better without the the ding tail just the percussive and the first thing I added which is very exacerbated by the next effects is just a frequency shifter pitching it down and adding some kind of pitch movement with this fine tune I'm automating and of course OTT to beef it up this corpus just to weirdify the heck out of it and this movement you're hearing you see so I turn it on a random mode to mess with the tune mess with the decay but this LFO gives it that movement Awesome. Vocoder, because vocoder is awesome. It could use like some OTT beforehand, but I was fine. I like the percussiveness of it. And here, turn up the band, turn up the BW, turn up the depth, turn down the release. Because I just wanted something nice and plucky. Similar delay trick to what I showed previously, put it on time, right? Mess with the dry wet. And then a bunch of OTT. Then soft clipped it and reverb it. And with all that, you get a crazy, moist, percussive, trappy lead. And you notice the tam timbre, timbre, whatever, still haven't looked up that word, has changed at the end. That's because I changed the coarse pitch of this frequency shifter, right, to a lower thing. All right, so that covers everything I have in this little loop here or whatever. I mean, as to summarize, more distorted sine waves, more messing with sine waves. Also mess with your vocoders for fill stuff. Introduce some more typical sound design elements like growls, yoys, or whatever. But most importantly for this weird lo-fi sound, of course, mess with different distortion settings, different layers, but really take it into sampler, freeze the audio out, pitch it down, mess it around. You can really do this with any kind of bass sound, but I think for SFAM, you're better off with just distorted sine waves, process sine waves, stuff like that. But really, experiment with it. You can get crazy results. I will drop a tutorial on how to get some crazy results just like resampling these basses over and over. Get some really otherworldly kind of stuff going on. But that's everything for this video. Thanks for watching this far. I didn't expect it to go on this long, but Hey, we're here. You're watching. Enjoy. If you did enjoy, hit the like button. That'd be awesome. If you have any comments or suggestions for future videos, you know what to do. Leave a comment. And of course, subscribe so you can see more content from me. That would support the channel. That would support me. And you get to see more sound design knowledge get dropped. And of course, I'd offer lessons. Just email me, check the link in the description, join the Discord, all this jazz. I'll stop talking now because you're probably bored. This is Bunting. Peace out.